Welcome to 360 Sports Network, Road to the Final Four Special. In this series of podcasts, we break down every conference tournament to see who gets the automatic burst into the big dance. You can keep tabs on our website, 360sportsnetwork.com, for all the latest updates and, of course, bubble predictions here in the last week heading up to Selection Sunday. And, of course, follow us on Twitter for all of your latest sports updates, both in and outside the world of college basketball. I'm James Dotson. Today we want to look at the big conference, the Big East. Supposedly up to 10 teams from the Big East are to make the NCAA tournament this year. I only see five teams who are locked right now in the tournament. The top three seeds, Syracuse, Marquette, and Notre Dame definitely are. And then Georgetown and Louisville, the numbers five and seven seeds in the tournament, also should be locks. But beyond that, you know, I really don't see many solid teams out there. A lot of people are looking at South Florida, and by the numbers, they see a very impressive conference record of 12-5. and But I see an unbalanced conference schedule, and zero impressive wins on their resume. Many think UConn, ranked ninth in the conference, which coincidentally is the same ranking they took in the Big East tournament last season when they ran the table, they think that they're locks to make the tournament again. I mean, they do have the top ranked strength of schedule, but I only see a team that has won six games since New Year's and four of which were against the powerhouse Big East teams, and I say that very sarcastically, of Seton Hall, Pitt, Villanova, and DePaul. They are not a tournament team in my mind unless they put on a big run like they did last year. Everybody's really high on Georgetown, too, for some reason, and honestly, I don't see it. I really have not seen any consistent play from them this year. They focus and rely too much on their defense, and when their offense just scores even worse than normal, it leaves their defense hanging out to dry. I see them losing in their first game. They're locked into the tournament, it appears, with their top 15 ranking, but they have been overrated in my book all year, and it's a little disappointing. I see St. John's or Pitt, either team, beating Georgetown in the second round, meaning an early exit and a very diminished seed. And Georgetown is a textbook team. It almost seems every year like they will have a very tough first-round matchup, and they just don't match up well because of their style of play. So keep an eye on the Hoyas. I wouldn't trust them. Cincinnati is uh, the fourth-ranked team in the Big East. Being fourth in the Big East really speaks for itself, but they have a pathetic strength of schedule for a Big East team. They are ranked outside of the top 100. Seton Hall has lost six games in a row in January and February, and they lost three of their last four games. So are they a team really worthy of a bid right now? And West Virginia has work to be done, too. They only have an 18-12 and 12 record, and that's a huge drag on their resume. They need a couple of big wins from Kevin Jones to secure any at-large bid. They need a big game from Jones. They need to get a few wins. So let's forget about NCAA possibilities for a minute, and let's focus on the Big East tournament here at Madison Square Garden. The last few years, the Big East tournament has been all about a team making a run from the first or second day and making all the way to the finals. This year, I just don't see that happening. I don't see any teams being able to accomplish that feat, going from day one, like UConn did last year, and making the championship. Actually, the top four teams in the conference have been so dominant this year that I see them all making the semifinals of the tournament, which is very unique for the Big East tournament. Cincinnati... They're just too inconsistent, though. I don't see them going any further than that. Notre Dame, they're too dependent on the outside shot. Now, I could go on about both of these teams' strengths, but for both of them, their biggest strength is their weakness. For the Irish, it's the outside shot. You live by the three, you die by the three. For Cincy, it's their starting five. They all do well, but the lack of a bench means that if one starter struggles, which has happened very often this year, then the entire team as a whole is in trouble. So therefore, I see the top two seeds, Syracuse and Marquette, making the finals. I know, big shocker. Alright, well, let's do some shocking then. I do say Buzz Williams and the Marquette Golden Eagles will take the title. Darius Johnson Odom has been impressive as can be this year. And he has a supporting cast around him, including Jay Crowder, Vander Blue, Todd Mayo. They are a tough team to defeat. Now, the Orange under Jim Boeheim's 2-3 defense can really neutralize a big player but not an all-around great team like Marquette is this year. I love what Buzz Williams has created at Marquette. They carry a lot of momentum into New York, and a Big East championship could propel them all the way up to possibly a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Well, that's it for breaking down the Big Daddy of the Big East tournament at Madison Square Garden.
You can stay tuned with our website, 360 Sports Network, for all the final conference tournament games coming up. And of course, on Twitter, to be informed for every new update as we count down the hours to Selection Sunday and when the bubble finally bursts for some of the teams out there. I'm James Dotson for 3SN. Have a good night.